Whoa, look, is that not the fucking coolest thing? One of the coolest things you've ever seen is this OBS thing. Um, greetings, groovy people. Welcome to the channel. I am the self-proclaimed blue dragon. And this week, I thought I would do something that I haven't done in about a year. Uh, actually, this was inspired by someone who commented on one of my top six not safe for work comic list that I did last year. And I realized, you know, I, you know, part of my, my New Year's resolutions was to make sure that I talk about some really cool independent comics and artists, try to uplift, I mean, I don't have like a huge platform, but try, try to get people connected with some really cool fucking art. And so that's what we're doing this week. I just got inspired by that. So thank you. I don't want to like disclose who you are because I don't know how private people are, but thank you person who commented on um, my not safe for work list because, um, yeah, I needed to get my ass in gear for this and you inspired this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be doing a, a baker's dozen. And I know that some of you out there who watch my channel, I read your comics and you read mine. If you're not on this list, don't worry. I, I may actually have you on another list at another time. Or I've already talked about your comic, like with fan art or other videos that I've done. So um, nothing personal. These are just some of the ones that I specifically wanted to talk about today. I've got 13, a baker's dozen. I'm going to do six from Comic Fury, six from Tapas, and one that um, is on Webtoons, but I actually, I read it both on Webtoons and on the main website. So there's no particular order to this. I'm just going, I mean, th th this is not like a ranking list for me. I'm just making a list and sharing it with you. So let's go ahead and get started with Tapas. I talked about this comic when I was doing my Q&A at the end of March. This is Oi, Tales of Bardic Fury. I'm going to read the details and then I'll show you a little bit of the artwork. I'm gonna let the art do most of the talking. I don't wanna like tell y'all what all is going on and everything, but yeah, I'll, I'll just let y'all you know, come to your own conclusions. If you like what you see, I personally like the storytelling in these. So, I mean, it's up, you know, everything's subjective, but this is stuff that I think needs attention. And I'm going to read the description to y'all. Oi is the story of a young bard in ancient Ireland who gets sent to a tiny town in the north that's never heard music before. Okay, so that's, that's pretty uh, bare bones what this is. This is a fucking hippie folk rock fucking music band with mythical beings and creatures and epic fucking music battles of the likes that I've yet to see. Like, I've read parts of Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. I've read, you know, some manga and shit that has, like, music in it and, you know, st stuff like that. And those are great. Not shitting on those. Those are amazing. But this is so fucking fun. There's a lot of comedy in this comic. The artwork is spectacular. Professional level, in my opinion. I'm gonna show a couple pages that are old, earlier pages, now you'll notice that I haven't liked these. It's because I actually started this comic over on Comic Fury. Anyway, this is the cover for volume one or chapter one. This is gonna give you a little bit of an idea of how things started out. There is a little bit of color in it here and there, especially later on in, in later pages. But I, I just, I mean, even this early stuff is pretty fucking cool. This character here is fucking badass. <laughs> I love this shit out of him. Um, I don't want to spoil a whole bunch, but let's let's take a look at some of the newer art. Most of these are not safe for work, just to, to let you know. But I mean, look at this shit. I fucking love the movement, the line work. Oh my god, this is such an inspiration, you know? And it's mostly black and white. It's heavily inked, obviously. I just... I just love it. The the movement, the action. This is a really fucking fun comic. If you like Irish mythology and stories and learning, I mean, a little bit of Irish history. I mean, obviously take it with a grain of salt because it's a fantasy book. You might like this. This is really fucking cool. And it is, again, primarily black and white, but there's a couple color splashes here and there. Like he has like special art and shit like this right here. Oh my god, and his character's name is Rhiannon too. Like, this this chick here, her name's Rhiannon. So, I mean, you know, I have a character named Rhiannon. I love the shit out of that. Okay, moving along. There's going to be um, kind of a, 
a common thread with some of these comics. Some uh, hippie thread, that is. I love the shit out of hippie stuff. This is Fair Meadow. I discovered this, I think, last year. And boy, is this fucking amazing. Let's go ahead and read into the, the detail. When a wayward soldier stumbles into a pacifist commune deep in the wilderness, she finds herself working alongside those she was sworn to fight. Fair Meadow's isolation allows it to thrive in a world destroyed by war, but their isolation also threatens to be what tears them apart. Um, and then they go on to say that this was inspired by tabletop RPGs and the counterculture of the 1960s. God, this comic, when I saw it, I subbed immediately. I, I comment on, well, I didn't comment on this one, but let's just take a look at some of the artwork. If you're a fan of D&D, &D, if you like hippie culture and art and you really like, you know, like the, the concept of commune living, where this is going, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I love that they start with like, I, I, are they called she orcs? I mean, I play D&D, &D, but I, I'm not like super into like all the characters and types of people you can play. But I first took a look at this and I was like, oh my god, where is this going? This is, this is kind of cool. And it's all full color. But they really, I mean, the paneling and just the design, look at how it like, pulling back like this shows you the expanse of which this character is walking. And then, like, bringing you in up close, it's just, it's really well composed, it's really well proportioned and drawn, and I just, I mean, it immediately pulled me in. But, okay, so these are the earlier pages, right? Oh my god, it's so cool. So, like, I, you, you've already got mystery, there's, like, very minimal text at all, so the story is moving really quickly, but... I just, I just can't impress upon you guys how, how fucking amazing this is. So uh, no spoilers, but she runs in, you know, she finds this place. She finds this commune like place. And of course, you know, having come from nothing but war and being pitted against, you know, people, she's very suspicious, but this is just so, I mean, look at how, the colors, the colors are really well done. I'm spending a lot of time on this because I just really, I love the shit out of this. You can see like the 60s influence, not just in the character, but also in like the loopy font, which was inspired by a lot of the Art Nouveau artists. You know, you see that in a lot of posters. Most of you probably are aware of that, but you know, just in case, you know, there are people who don't, don't really know much about the poster art of the 60s. I just, I, I like everything about this. The, the color combinations are very well done it's just very well designed and this is an independent artist y'all this is so cool this is so beautiful i mean the artwork almost makes me cry it's so beautiful i mean and how i don't really say that very often like comics will make me cry but the artwork is just fucking fantastic and i love that there's a lot of text and discussion and stuff but it's very easy to read. It moves along very easily. And I, I can't recommend this comic enough. We're going to switch gears a little bit. This one, I don't know. This does not update very often, but the person does still update. It's the Palace of Tears. You can see all the information here. This comic, oh my god. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Let's read the description. On the ravaged earth of the far-flung future, pockets of humanity strive for survival and glory. Old tales are reborn, eternal hunger stirred, and long-forgotten creatures of chaos roam the soft spaces where dreams and madness collide. This looks like something you'd pull off the fucking shelf of a comic book store. I am just in love with how beautiful and how mysterious and how just fascinating this this comic is um it's another one that doesn't have a lot of text especially at the beginning now it does have text later on but look at how great the use of color is again we've got the establishing shot um close up so that we kind of you know you're immediately drawn into like what this person is feeling you immediately feel the heat even though these are very warm colors it also 
oddly enough, because there's a, a hint of blue, it also feels a little bit cool to me. I also got, I, this. nothing at all like it, but this also gave me kind of Pirates of Dark Water vibes, just like the art style, not like, not not the cartoon or anything. I actually had the comic books of that, too. Um, but I love the very obvious Asian influence. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, it kind of feels not just Chinese, but it actually feels more Thai, I, I think. Isn't that kind of, doesn't a lot of their artwork have like the swirlies? The swirlies, it's real fucking professional. But to me, the artwork feels almost Thai. Um, uh, that looks fairly, ch well, I don't know though. I mean, I guess everyone influenced each other, you know, with like a lot of the statues. But God, look at this. This looks very um, uh, floating world, very Japanese, this specific influence here. Um, but this almost looks like a foodog style dragon, almost to me. I mean, well, what the fuck do I know? I don't know shit. Don't ask me. I'm, I'm, I'm not educated in this, but I mean, it takes this person a while to post because I'm sure they've got a life outside of art, but God. And then look when, when they move to the silhouettes. Oh my gosh. This is just so beautiful. I can't, I'm, I'm kind of stuttering over my words, but I just, I just love it. This is just amazing. And then we'll come to like a newer page. So you can see like, like the latest page. Do you see how it was between November 21 and February 22? This person, it takes them a while to uh, get to the artwork. But I mean, can you blame them? Look at this. Oh my God. I... It speaks for itself. I've got nothing else to say. This is a quick read because there is text. There's a lot of text, but there's a lot of just beautiful artwork that carries you through. It's really a celebration of fucking detail and art. And I just, if you are familiar with Asian art, not just, you know, Japan or China, if you look at like Vietnamese art, if you look at, um, I haven't really seen anything too Indian inspired. But if you're looking at like Southeast Asian art and, you know, stuff from China and from Japan and Korea, um, this stuff, this comic is really fucking, you, you can kind of pick up on those influences. At least I feel that, that those are the influences. Maybe not. I don't know. That's just what I get from it. But highly recommended. So let's move on to my next one. Um, I can't show you very much of this because it is behind a paywall. I am a patron of this artist. I love the shit out of her comics. And this Swaha was the one that drew me into, into being a patron of hers. Because if you didn't notice, my, my comic, Dark Horse, free, link down in the description. You can read it if you want. Oh, I had to plug myself there. But I'm influenced by not just 1960s music and culture and the Beatles primarily, but also I've always absolutely adored the artwork and textiles and um, learning about the culture of India and Hin Hinduism, Buddhism. I, I don't really, I couldn't like say that I know very much of Jainism, but you know, I, I know it exists. <laughs> Isn't that fucking, that's really pathetic. I'm grabbing it at straws, but I'm just saying I really love that type of artwork. And this creator, if I'm not mistaken, I think she I think she's American, but she's actually of Indian descent. So when I when I started reading this, I was like, okay, this is actually really fucking cool. It's got to do with some Hindu stories. Um, let me go ahead and just read the description. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, this is a long, oh, it's got Indra. I forgot that it had Indra, duh. Okay, so as the demigods of sacred fire, Swaha and her husband Agni lead peaceful lives ensuring the smooth operation of heaven. That is, until an accidental explosion in the underground world brings the demon queen Raka to heaven. There she confronts Agni's twin, King Indra, and accuses him of sending spies to cause the tragedy. When King Indra refuses to help the survivors, Swaha's anger drives her to help Queen Raka herself. 
However, King Indra's spies are everywhere, and he doesn't take kindly to a mere goddess lending aid to a perceived enemy of heaven. In a story inspired by Hindu mythology, Swaha dares to take it upon herself to punish King Indra for his misdeeds. But is it worth it if she throws her life and the heavens themselves into chaos? This comic is just... It's, it's gorgeous, in my opinion. It is a scroll comic. Um, I'm familiar with some of the names just because I've... I, I wouldn't say I'm a professional. I, I, I know very little of Hinduism, but I know a little bit just a little bit about some of the main um, deities that are within the faith. And Indra, I believe, is a major one, as well as Krishna and, of course, uh, Pavarati. And, you know, you know that a lot of them are incarnations, uh, different versions of the same god. It's, it, it's very complex, so there's no way I'm going to be able to, like, talk about it in this video. And I'm really not even the person to talk about it because it's not a faith that I practice. But I, 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 I really am very interested in... Um, learning about the the religion but you can see now this is different than the other comics as it is a scroll comic so it's laid out a little differently boy in in this one indra is like the definition of pride let me tell you i i can't i don't want to spoil much but i'm just showing you a little bit of what it looks like it can really speak for itself again um, but it was written by this independent artist. She's really just, just fucking amazing. Very inspirational. And I like how we're, we're seeing the temples. And, you know, if you look at Indian temples, um, even today, they're all extremely colorful. And when we think about, like, Greek and, you know, uh, temples from, like, European background... We oftentimes just think they were white, but they'd actually been painted similarly in very bright colors, just like, you know, some of these Indian temples. But because of the materials that were used, you know, the colors washed away. So all that was left behind was the stone, the marble. And so we always think that these statues and, and temples in Greece and Rome were just blank but it's like no they were very colorful people like color and i like how it's kind of um highlighted here in this comic also the the colors on the temple but here we got swaha and her husband and you can see you can easily tell why i like it it's very heavily an anime and manga inspired but its own style completely its own style um so you see the influences but it's really easy to just read through and scroll through this. And I'm not big on scroll comics, but I found this to be very enjoyable. Let's go ahead and move to like the very furthest one. The furthest example. Oh, that's Indra and his wife. I don't have a lot to say. Um, there's a little bit of romance in this. A, a lot of... of their own mythology that they're building based on Hindu stories. And then you, we're only seeing them in the traditional, um, you know, garb of the culture of this time. But later on in the story, without giving too many spoilers, they actually uh, are in a quote unquote present day with magic and stuff like that. It's really fucking cool. It takes a very different turn. Um, so it's definitely like a creation of the author, the artist, the writer. Um, it is her own thing, but it's inspired by Hinduism. And it kind of starts with like this tale and then moves into like the future. It's so cool. I really like it. And this is a completed work. So if you're looking for a comic that's already done and you don't have to keep up with and you're willing to, you know, get behind the paywall, I highly recommend this because this is a really good story. The art is great. There's romance elements, there's magic, there's fighting, there's action, there's just a, a lot going on, and I really like it. And the colors, it's just a feast for the eyes. And you know I like my pretty boys. <laughs> so, okay, moving on. There's not going to be any way for me to discuss this comic. It's something that you have to experience yourself. And I know that sounds really, really weird, 
But it, it really is. I, I never read Homestuck. Is that it? Homestuck? Homestruck? I don't, I don't know. It, it's some, something to do with like video games and, you know, this huge world that was built up. I would not say this is like that, but I would say that it's adjacent to it in that it's kind of like the same genre. There's a video game that's being written. There's a lot of mind fucks in this and we don't really know what's going on. Let me just read the description real quick. This is called Dream DB, by the way. I should probably actually say that. <laughs> you look at the webcomic's description and read it. It tells you that you're reading it, but it doesn't say anything about the comic. You become a little self-conscious. Blink. Drama, comedy, and unexpected bullshit. The most animated comic on this website. We have time travel, dream mechanics, parallel worlds, witches in a spaceship, clones, hell. Fourth wall, not included. This comic is just... <sighs> okay, this is not for someone who does not like heavy text, first and foremost. There's lots of fucking amazing art. There's lots of animations. But there's also a lot of text because it's kind of a dialogue going between the characters. And you're dipping in and out of this dream world, which is, as far as I can surmise, a video game that this group of friends or cohorts, I'm not sure, I feel like they're friends, is how it started out. But there's so much fucking mystery. It's so shrouded in mystery and it bounces. It's, it's not in chronological order. So you're picking up bits and pieces and everything's out of order. It's very, there's a lot of mystery with this comic. But there's also a lot of text. So if, you, if you're not fond of text, this may not necessarily be for you, but I'm going to show you a couple of the earlier pages and then we'll jump into some of the later pages. But, oh my God, it's so, it's so different. And that's why I have trouble explaining it. God, this reminds me of the old computers where you had to type in fucking park heads before you shut your computer down. <laughs> I just, I don't know if this, I don't know if she is a programmer in real life or if she does this full time. But it would appear as though she knows some coding. She would have to because her website is fucking fantastically complex. This is someone that I am a patron of. This is, okay, so I, like I said, this is very text heavy starting out. It is all about narrative and piecing the puzzle together. I I don't even, I mean, y'all, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through here very quickly. There's just, it's I I I really am stuttering because I'm speechless I'm not sure how to sell this comic because it's to me undefinable I cannot define this comic very well you really it, it is an experience it's it's a lot to get through at least for me, <laughs> stupid me, stupid me. Um, it's hard for me, but I mean, if I could do it, I, I love the shit out of this. I love, this comic is just, it's, I want to know what's going on. It's so mysterious. And there's just interesting characterization going on and you don't, characters that, you don't know if they've been reproduced in code and if or if they've disappeared into the code. Okay, I'm I'm just fucking sounding like a, an idiot right now. So let's let's take a look at um let's not do the intermission. Let's do let's do this episode down here. Um and there is a little bit of LGBT stuff in here. There's nothing explicit. Um no explicit sex, but I, I would say this comic, um, you know, I haven't seen like too much violence, but I'm not sure if this is, I don't think this is for a younger audience. So most, most of the stuff that I read is usually for an adult audience. 
And I think this would, unless the kid's real with it, I, I think this would be a little too complex for them. It's com too complex for me. <laughs> That's not saying much. But yeah, I mean, this is what I'm talking, I mean, you can jump in at any place. I can just show you any of this because everything is so out of order. But look at all these different styles. This person's got other comics too that I did not realize and I just recently subbed. Dream DB. I experience it yourself. Don't don't listen to me. You, LeVar Burton always said, you don't have to take my word for it. Likewise for me. Just just check it out. See if it's up your alley. It might not be, but you might fucking discover something that is amazing and cutting edge and really nothing like this unless Homestuck is like this. But I, I tried to get into that and I guess you had to be part of it. Um, to really get into it so nothing no not not shitting on that I just don't really know that experience but this this is really I I really enjoy it um I think it's really creative it's really fucking different and this is an artist that I think people should keep an eye on the last one that I want to talk about from Tapas this is gonna be a long ass video I love this comic this is called the Black Belt Society. Let's go ahead and just get on board. Let's go ahead and start with the details and then I'll talk a little bit about it. A goddess is missing and her three sisters have lost hope in finding her. Almost all hope. Their last resort is to call on three teens from the beloved city of Embry. Elliot, Tyler, and Laura have the talent and bravery to find the lost goddess, but will that be enough? These new members of the Black Belt Society must prove their strength and will to the goddesses by undergoing multiple trials. But what will be waiting for them at the end of those trials? Will it be the goddess or will it be something more? This comic is just fucking flat out fun. That's why I love it. It's a fun fucking comic. It reminds me of like 90s, uh, like uh, Toonami. American anime kind of stuff. I mean, not Toonami, but um, is Ben 10 American? I don't know. This is not my generation I'm speaking to. This just reminds me. I I'm older than that is what I'm saying. But this, you can you can see the anime influence. But again, uh, actually, I would even say uh, video game influence almost. But also, you know, it's this, this is its own style. I've never really seen anything illustrated quite like this it's a lot of fucking fun it's action it's you know got uh its own little mythology thing going on it's got fighting i love this comic and i keep up with it on a regular basis um she takes little breaks every now and then so that she can you know do a chapter at a time or half a chapter at a time but she always comes back and I am so looking forward to where this is going. I love the theme of the elements. I, I'm big into elements myself. So, I mean, that's what I'm talking about where it feels kind of anime-like. Um, obviously, other people have done elements before, not just anime. But you can tell by the style. You know what I'm talking about. But I'm just scrolling through this so you can see the art style. And now, I don't want to spoil anything because there was just something that happened. There was just a plot twist that happened. So, I don't, I don't want to spoil that but let me see if I can uh let's do chapter four maybe I'll show you some of this this art okay so these are the trials there there's the three main characters that the description was talking about Tyler um who is my favorite he's the the green the earth <laughs> and then Laura who is the uh fire elemental and then Elliot who is the ice or water elemental um, but they're going through these trials and you can just kind of, yeah, just look at the art. I love this. I love it. He kind of looks like Link here. <laughs> I bet that's intentional. That's what I'm talking about, like, like with the video game influence, I feel. I haven't talked to her. I read her, like, descriptions and, like, her, uh, intermissions and stuff whenever she posts stuff like that. I just like this comic. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's really fucking fun. And I think you should check it out. This one is actually primarily safe for work. Um, I think there might be a little bit of cussing. There's some cartoon violence. But this is probably one of the few ones that I actually read that's remotely safe for work. In my opinion. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. Go check it out. The Black Belt Society. Those were six from Tapas. 
Now let's do six from Comic Fury. And I'm going to start with someone in my collective, the, not mine, but in the collective I am a part of, Saffron Wave. Kind of keeping up with the manga anime theme here. I have a variety of comics and styles. I, I'm really not picky when it comes to reading, particularly independent artists. Like, I won't go out and buy a romance novel, but I will occasionally read something romance by an independent artist. But that's not what this is. This is not. This is Magical Girl. She's in the Cur the Aradia Collective. Um, love her art. Just really fucking professional level art. Let's go ahead and read it. Also, she does a lot of history. She does a lot of research. Let's get into this. 3,000 years ago, a girl lived on an island. She made friends, fell in love, and, with a gift from the gods, became the first person chosen to save the world. Nefreli, Nefrel, Nefreli, is a young woman living in 1629 BCE on Minoan Crete. She lives a simple life, fishing and farming her small plot of land to sustain herself. Life is completely upended by a mysterious woman appearing, giving her a magical pendant, and being told to defend the island from the sea people. Will Nefeli assume her role as survivor? Okay, I, I am probably mispronouncing that name. I'm so sorry. I mispronounce everything. But this comic is beautiful. I want to just show it to you. Here's uh, the cover. Oh, I had the pleasure of having this as a secret Santa one year with our collective. And I got to draw her character. Oh my god, she's gorgeous. But this this is about the level. This is the art. And this looks, to me, very fucking professional. And there's a lot of action. There's so much history. There's details. Because, like I was saying a little earlier, this artist, I've chatted with her a little bit. And she shares little tidbits in between chapters. But she actually does a lot of research um, background research on this time period. So even though it's Magical Girl, she's including like references to stuff that, you know, historical things, places, events, etc, etc. Um, it's a fun Magical Girl manga. What can I say? Amera manga. I think she's in America. Yeah, she's in America. So yeah, I, I don't have a lot to say about it. Again, I'm gonna let the art speak for itself. I really fucking like this comic. It's a lot of fun. Oh my god, I love this character. She's so fucking funny. <laughs> uh, oh! <laughs> yeah, this is April Fools. That's hilarious. Okay, if you like Magical Girls, if you like history lessons, go check out Saffron Wave. The longer I go on, the shorter these reviews are going to be because I keep coughing. All right. Now, this admittedly is one that I've only skimmed over thus far, but I am loving it. This is called Tusk. This looks like something you'd pull off a shelf in a comic book store. Let's read it. A high fantasy tale exploring the relationship between xenophobia and fascism. Follow the slightly tongue-in-cheek adventures of, oh god, Chthonis. The orc, risible, over-the-top action, preposterous fashion tips, ludicrous plot twists, and maybe more. Rated PG-13. Oh, hey, look, y'all, I read a comic that's not rated R. Okay, first and foremost, I love the shit out of Frenzetta. I didn't, I, I knew about Boris Vallejo first, but apparently Boris Vallejo was inspired by Frenzetta. And now I realize I love both of their artwork styles. You can definitely see with the, uh, triangle here on the cover the composition you can see the influence i haven't started reading this seriously yet but i started reading it i've read like the first like 10 pages god look at this art this this looks like something david day would have done david day did a lot of uh tolkien artwork look at how beautiful this is this is a fucking independent artist you guys i don't want to hear people talking shit about indie artists i don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it. Like, just because my stuff looks like shit, there's, like, a lot of fucking fantastic artists out there. Yeah, I read through all this this part here. Look at this artwork. God. I don't even... I, I don't need to talk for it, though, because I've read into, like, where there's a brawl, there's a bar fight or something later on. 
But God, this is so fucking cool. This is so cool looking. I just love, oh my God. And yeah, this speaks for itself. Go read it. It's amazing. That's all I've got to say. Serious face. Okay, now, this might be the same author. Oh my god, I didn't realize that. Uh-oh. Well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I didn't even know these were the same people. Mindfold. I need to catch up on this. It's got a lot of pages. But much like Tusk, the artwork is impeccable. Let's read the description. An exiled starship pilot and an outlaw sorceress stuck on a dying planet. They just want to relax and polish their jaded attitudes, but they are too busy trying not to get killed. God, this comic is gorgeous. Here's the first page. Oh my God. And now see this? Um, again, I'm getting the Frenzetta feel, but there's another artist. It's not Brom. There's someone that I used to see. My mom used to get um, in the mail, the science fiction fantasy club some something like that they had catalogs advertisements essentially that they would mail out uh, book of the month club something like that you, she would always half the time send the books back because she didn't want them but she wanted to get the catalog right so I remember looking at like this is where I got a lot of my inspiration as a real young kid was looking through all these these um book titles from like the 90s and before you know stuff like that but this it's not Brahm. There's someone, I can't remember who, but this reminds me of another one of those artists. And I can't remember who it is. I, if anyone knows, if this reminds anyone of something, please let me know down in the comments. But this this artwork, it's just like fucking environment pornography. It's so beautiful. The Hudson River School on crack. On LSD. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This person, no, I'm, not, I'm not implying anything. It's very, I mean, well, while it, it feels, like I said, inspired by some famous fantasy artist, it also feels fairly unique to me. This one has a lot of action. This is really cool. Oh my God, look at this. Do you see what's going on? Do you need me to point it out? Um, where was I at? Um, load my place. So you can see, this is where I left off. God. High fantasy artwork here. Oh my God, I can't even, I don't want to spoil anything for myself. <laughs> Oh, there's nudity in this one, by the way. Maybe I'll throw a sensor thing over it and try to make this slightly not not safe for work. Anyway, mindful. This is really fucking awesome. Go check it out. <laughs> okay, here's another one. I have not read all of this comic. I started it a while back, but I'm subbed to like a billion comics, so it's hard for me to keep up. But uh, this is Android Blues, and it is fucking beautiful another one that's so beautiful it almost makes me cry the description's very short lisa the newly activated android is hunted by everyone short and sweet because this is another one where the art fucking speaks for itself god look at this art oh my god it's so beautiful like even without i mean obviously objectification is going in my opinion to be a theme in this but even like not taking the the position in in mind how she's seated just the colors and the style and the lighting it's beautiful it's sad it reminds me of picasso's blue period i mean android blue duh i'm fucking stupid <laughs> they have got to make it obvious for me um but this This is very sci-fi, obviously. Just amazing. Independent artists. Wow, just... It's 
so cool. To me, thus far, this feels like tasteful nudity. Um, I don't know, but... Oh my gosh. Look at the line work. Oh my gosh, this is... Look at this art. Oh, I'm I'm speechless. Uh, yeah, go check this comic out. Sci-fi, beautiful art, easy to read. Don't know where it's going. It's fucking awesome. Go check it out. We're sticking with the sci-fi genre. It's some of my favorite genres. Sci-fi fantasy, of course. This person's comic is amazing. I read two of them. I need to catch up on them too, but I've read quite a quite a bit of Alterian Saga. That's the name of this one. Tales of a Galactic Empire is the subtitle. Watch me mispronounce everything. Uh, Emperor Shakes is dead. His Alterian uh, Empire is collapsing, while ambitious royals fight to replace him. Three girls and a mercenary squad embark on a quest to save the day, but things aren't as simple or clear-cut as they seem, and a new faction is on the rise. War, diplomacy, riots, lost technology, space pirates, and a lot of planets and alien civilizations and a space opera adventure. This is exactly what it says it is. There's some politics in here. Politics like along the line of Game of Thrones, only not that... Um, complicated that I can see I mean it will be I'm not that's not a bad thing that's not that's not I'm not saying that as like a, an insult at all I mean that in a good way uh, although I have a suspicion that it probably will get complicated um, but she is an amazing artist she does this digitally and it looks painted it's absolutely gorgeous she's created her own brushes I've asked her questions about it and she's talked a little bit about it um, in her comments But it is really fucking, it's really cool. There's a lot of action. You've got, like they said, space pirates. I am really enjoying this. There, There is a lot of text. This is one of those that's text heavy, but it's fine. It's fun text. I love the characters. Beautiful women, beautiful men, beautiful other characters. A menagerie of different people. And mysterious stuff. Oh my god, this is so... Um, she had said, because I was asking her some of her influences, she had said that she was influenced by uh, Gordon Dixon's uh, Dorsai series. Which I never read the Dorsai series, but I loved the shit out of The Dragon and the George. That book specifically. I didn't read others in the series. I need to read them. But it was just fun because I was like, oh my god, I know that... Wow, I know that author. And I remember seeing those Dorsai books, but I never, I, I was more into fantasy than sci-fi when I was younger. I kind of like both now. Um, I always liked sci-fi too, don't get me wrong. I liked aliens and stuff, but when it came to reading, I was primarily reading fantasy. But wow, this is just, it's, I can't, I, I can't put it into words. I just, this looks like some Mobius shit here. I love it. I mean, I really, I highly recommend this. They go, they're on a mission right now. I need, like I said, I need to catch up, but they're on a mission. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say. You know what? Look at the art. You, you can read a little bit of the text. Hit pause if you like. This is just a really cool comic. Professional level from an independent artist. So, yeah, check it out. And the last Comic Fury comic I'm going to suggest today. And we're going to get to the last one that I'm going to discuss. Now, this author has a ton of shit that I love. I'm just going to open this up. This is freaky as fuck. But I'm not talking about this comic today. I'm going to have a surreal comic list at some point. So I'm not going to talk about this one. 
We're going to talk about the ham. There is no comic description. This person lets their art speak for itself. And boy, does it speak for itself. This is so fucking cool. I read this over the weekend. Oh my God. All the stippling, the beautiful use of just heavy inking and the details. God, this person is so fucking skilled. It's, it makes me, I don't want to say jealous because I'm happy for them sharing their fucking amazing art and, and skills with the world. Their storytelling is awesome too. This was such a quick read for me. I love this, but it's all mystery. There's some shit going down in this small town. This guy owns kind of like, um, an antique shop thing. And it's just weird town, weird small town America, weird shit. Old, weird America. So we've got this mystery going on. And we're following a couple characters at once. We used to have a clock like that. My, my mom did. It was a, a German clock. God, look at this art. I have nothing to say. It's weird. Um, there's uh, a bit of mystery with this. Just weird small town shit. If you're from a small, if you're from small town America, you, God, these fucking characters, you know them. Just shit's going down and it's fucking eye candy. This, the line work, it's just fucking gorgeous. And it's an interesting story. I have no idea what's going on, but I want to know. It's so cool. This is just so cool. This bitch is fucking out of her mind. There's only like 30 pages of this right now anyway. So there's no excuse to not, not, if you don't, if you're not looking to catch up on something that's, you know, been going for like ever, this one's just started. So there's no excuse to not read. Oh my God, the eyeball. The eyeball. I didn't notice that before. Oh, okay. Okay. I knew this guy was in here, but fucking troll doll. This is so cool. The ham on Comic Fury. Read it. Read it. I love this comic. This doesn't need me to talk about it. They've got plenty of followers. But, I mean, I am only subscribed to a handful of Webtoon comics. I just love the shit out of this comic. I'm going to read the description. Ava's demon is about a girl named Ava and the demon haunting her. The demon, however, might just be the ghost of an alien queen, Rathia, seeking revenge on the one that destroyed her empire, a godlike figure named Titan. The story follows Ava as she makes her way across the universe, teaming up with Rathia on a quest for revenge while fighting her inner demons along the way. This is so fucking cool. Like, you can read it on webtoons and that's cool, but you aren't going to get the full experience on webtoons, in my opinion. I don't even know how the hell to get to the very beginning. How do you get to the beginning? Um, this is pretty far along. I mean, you can read it here on webtoons. It's, it's fine. I read it here, but the real experience is coming to the main website, which is avasdemon.com, because this shit, it's so cool. So we start like this. It's sci-fi. It's, you know what, you know why I like this comic is that it's both sci-fi and fantasy. There's magic and science technology shit. It's like wizards, only way more complex. I love, I love wizards, don't get me wrong, I like Bakshi, but this is a little more complex. So that's the early part, but the cool thing is as you move along, Oh my god, where's the really cool shit? Okay, you guys, this is what's so cool. I'm not gonna play this whole thing. But this is part of the comic.
I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to show you everything. God, this is so fucking cool. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to give any spoilers or anything on what's going on. But when you read this on Webtoons, it's static and it's, it flows better and makes a hell of a lot more sense when you're looking at it on, on the website and actually watching the video that goes with it. Um, and there's more stuff like that. Like mostly it's, it's just, you know, reading stuff. But there's tons of videos and stuff. And it's so cool. It's, it's kind of like that Dream DB, only not... I mean, different, but like they, they utilize animations and stuff, which is really cool to me. Um, and then the music, that adds a whole new element. Uh, this is a great comic. Lots of people read it already, but I wanted to kind of talk about it too, because I've been reading it for a long time, and I just wanted to talk about it. It's not the first webcomic that I that I ran to, but it's it's one of my favorites and it's independent independent artists work on this um, There was an original writer and artist But I think she teams up now with a couple other people to work on coloring and you know Collaborates with like musicians and shit like that. So it's it's really cool. It's a very cool collaborative comic and I It's just fucking epic. It's really fucking epic I love it. I I don't have much more to say about it other than I love it. It's really fucking cool. And so that's it. I just wanted to thank you all for watching. I know this is a long one. Absolutely amazing comics. Independent artist. Go support indie artist, please. Because there's a lot of really good shit out there. And while professional artists need a paycheck, um, they have a little bit more of a safety net than independent artists do. So please check out these comics. And if you like something, throw some dosh their way. Uh, help them out because th this is just top tier, in my opinion. And I'll have some more lists later on that has a plethora of different topics and um, skill level and just, just uh, a lot of different comics that I personally read and enjoy. So I'll have more of those later in the year. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it. Uh, these kind of take a long, believe it or not, it takes a long time to kind of edit this stuff. But thank you all for watching. I'll be back next week with another video, shorter video. Peace and love, fare you well, and keep on trucking.